Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Flightsim.com's Force Feedback Yoke Review, Part 2, coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. Before we jump into part two of our review, I just have two disclaimers. Flightsim.com did send me this for review. However, I am not being paid for my review and all the opinions about the product are mine and mine alone. Second, I am not a pilot, so I will not be able to compare the actual forces in a real aircraft to the force feedback yoke and the forces that are applied within it. Now, if you missed part one, we did a teardown of the unit so you could see all the components inside of the force feedback yoke. I'll post links down in the description, or you could click up here. In today's episode, we will connect the yoke to our PC, followed by the download and installation of the force feedback software. Then we'll run through the calibration process through Windows. We will then go over all the settings and effects that the force feedback software has, learn how to save different profiles. Now, as always, I'm going to keep this review as objective as possible and hold my opinions till my final conclusion in part three. If you have any comments or questions throughout today's video, post it down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. All the links for today's video, as well as all of the other videos in this series, will be down in the description. If you enjoyed today's content and find it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Now with that out of the way, let's get this hooked up to my PC and get rolling with the software. All right, so on the back of the force feedback yoke, we have a couple ports. Now the only thing that we're gonna need if you have a single yoke is we're gonna hook up the power, the emergency stop, and the USB-C to our PC. For the USB-C, we're gonna use the supplied USB-C cable and plug it right into USB-C. We're also gonna take the emergency stop button and we're gonna plug that into the stop port on the back. Now the other thing is, you wanna make sure that when you plug in your power cable, that you have the power turned off, that you do not have the power brick plugged in to the outlet. Make sure that you plug this in first, then plug the power brick in. All right, so now that we have everything connected to our PC, we're gonna head over to the flightsim.com forward slash setup guide this is where we're gonna be able to download the software for our force feedback yoke. This has also got a lot of good information about the software and setup, but we're gonna go over everything step by step. So on this page, you need to scroll all the way down until you get to download latest ffbtools.zip. So you're gonna go ahead and download that zip file. All right, so once you have that downloaded and extracted, just go ahead and put that folder right on your desktop. Once you have that done, we can double click on the folder and then we're gonna double click on the force feedback tools folder. We're gonna to scroll all the way down to where it says force feedback tools and it will be the version number of the software. Before we actually start up the software, we need to make some configuration changes to the exe file. We're gonna right click on the force feedback tools file. We're gonna go down to properties. Once you're into properties, we will then go to compatibility and you're going to go all the way down in the settings area. We're going to tick the box that says run this program as administrator. Once you're done there, we're going to tick on change high DPI settings. Once here, you're going to go all the way to the bottom to where it says high DPI scaling override. You're going to tick the box and you want to make sure that you come in and check system enhanced. 
That's very important. Then we can hit OK, click Apply, OK, and we have now set up the force feedback software for our first time. So now that that is complete, we need to run through the calibration process in Windows to set up the force feedback yoke before we open the force feedback software. To do this, we're going to head down to the start bar and you're going to go to your settings. Once you're in the settings, we can head over to devices. Once we're in devices, then we're going to go to devices and printers. In here, you should be able to find the CLS force feedback yoke. If you do not see the CLS force feedback yoke, that means that we need to power up the unit for the first time. So let's go ahead and give that a go. To power up the yoke, we need to first make sure the power cord is plugged into the back of the yoke and that the power supply is plugged into an outlet on your wall. Once that is done, we need to release the emergency stop so that the unit will power on. At this point, do not touch the yoke at all. Let it run through its startup process. Once it's finished, it should give you a little wiggle at the end to let you know we're all set to go. At this point, you should see your CLS60 yoke populate in your devices. We can then right click on the yoke and then select Game Controller Settings. Once we're here, we're going to find the CLS60, left click there, and then we're going to head down to Properties. In the next menu, we want to go up to the Settings tab and we are going to calibrate our force feedback yoke as a Windows Game Controller. And this will walk you through the calibration wizard. Just hit Next. Leave the handle centered and press a button on the controller. Now we're going to move the handle in complete circles and then press a button on the controller. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we leave the handle centered and press the button one more time. All right, the calibration is complete. We can hit finish and apply. We're good to go. Now just keep in mind that when you're doing this calibration, you wanna make sure that you hit all of the stops. So full left, full right, all the way in and all the way out in a complete pattern circle so that it can get all of the stops of the yoke. During this portion, it will be a little hard because you're going to be fighting against the forces of the force feedback yoke. All right, so now that we're finished with this, we can close out of the devices and printers, and we can close out of this menu as well. Now that we're finished with that, go ahead and open up your force feedback software. Okay, so now that we have our force feedback software open, you will notice at the upper left-hand corner, we have three tabs, the general, the effects, and the configuration page. First, let's start with the general page. Now also keep in mind that at this point, you wanna make sure that your force feedback yoke is powered up and ready to go. Now we can hit connect on hardware device. This will connect the force feedback software to the yoke itself. Below this, we have flight simulator. Now, depending on the flight simulator you're gonna be using, you need to make sure that you check the appropriate flight simulator every time you open the force feedback software. Below this, we'll have the state of the device. So this will tell us whether it is connected to the software and it will tell us whether it's connected to the SIM. As you see here, we are not connected to the SIM. On the right hand side, this will give our pitch and roll channels. To switch between either pitch or roll, we can click on the pitch or roll button at the very top. Below your pitch and roll is a display box. In here will give us the position of the yoke, will give us the trim position of the aircraft. Now one thing to take notice of is your trim position and that's gonna be really important. Now let me explain why. 
I ran into an issue where I spawned into the sim, got into the aircraft, and started flying, and all of a sudden it was really difficult to keep the plane flying level. I had a lot of force on one side or the other. What happened was, is the trim position got out of whack on the aircraft, and I had to reset the trim position to zero. So if that happens to you and you get an enormous force pulling left or right, make sure that you check your trim position and make sure it says zero. If it does not say zero, then you're not able to come in and adjust this figure inside the software. You need to adjust this inside the aircraft. So if you have an aircraft that does not have aileron trim, then you need to bind a key to your yoke or some other piece of hardware uh, so that you can zero out your aileron trim. Below the display is our control. All of these settings down here are customizable. So let's go over the position category first. Point zero is going to be minus 90 degrees, so that is when the yoke is turned all the way to the left. And then on point three is going to be plus 90 degrees once the yoke is turned all the way to the right. Points one and point two is your dead zone in the center of the yoke. So we can set those by just pressing any number that you'd like. Now keep in mind that when you are setting point one, it's always going to be a negative number. As you'll see below in point two, we do not have the option to change this. But when we hit the send button at the bottom, it will automatically change our second point for us. We want to make sure that these are symmetric to each other, so this ensures that that happens. With the force feedback software, the dead zone is a little bit different in that it's not going to eliminate any movement of the yoke in a certain range, but instead will increase the level of force at a very rapid or slow pace. If we look at the chart here, at zero, we have no force applied to the yoke. From point zero, you're going to have a very rapid increase in force up until the minus three and plus three position until you get to your set force, which I have set here at minus eight and plus eight. Now let's take this one step further. If I were to say make point one minus nine and point two minus nine. Now you can see that curve has kind of flattened out a little bit. So now when we are moving off zero, the amount of force is going to be a more gradual force until we get to our set eight newtons of force. To make any settings permanent on this page, once you have everything set, Hitting the send button at the bottom will permanently change all of these settings in the yoke, so next time you boot it up, it will have all of the exact same settings. All right, so now let's move into saving profiles. To do this, we're gonna head over to the configure tab at the very top. Once you're in the configure tab, down in the profile section, all we need to do is to hit save profile. This will open up the force feedback tool folder, and then you can save your profile to whatever aircraft that you have set it up for. Now that you have your profile saved, if you wish to recall any of your profiles, all you need to do is hit load profile, select the profile you'd like, hit OK, and if we go back to the general tab, it will now change all of our settings for the profile of that aircraft. Now we also have another tab called effects. At the very top of the effects page, we have the effects profile. In here, we have a checkbox to set for default effects. If you do select default or any custom profile, you need to hit apply to apply all of those settings. The default profile is automatically set up for the Cessna 172, so this way you don't have to mess around with anything. If you wish to set up custom profiles, you would then select custom, and then after you make all of your changes to all of your different effects, then you would come in and hit the save button. In the profile dropdown, we have 10 different profiles that we can set up. Unfortunately, we're not able to label these for the aircraft, so you may want to have a little spreadsheet to let you know which profile is going to do what. 
To the right hand side we have hardware trim. This option will allow us to disable the hardware trim when we're on the ground. So now let's drop down to the flight parameters. These are going to give you all the telemetry data of your aircraft while we're in the sim. I'll show you this in part 3 once we spawn into the sim. Below this we have all of the different effects that we have to choose from. Starting from the left hand side is our physics. The yoke physics will allow the yoke to go all the way pushed in when you're sitting idle in your aircraft, such as the Cessna 172 when you are just sitting there at idle not moving, the yoke is all the way forward. This will allow us to set some of the settings for that. First we can enable the yoke to do that. Below that we have the force that's going to be applied to the yoke holding it in the downward position. Again you can change these to your personal preference, but this is going to be a percentage of the force that you have set in the general tab. Next down is our minimum yoke aerodynamic force impact speed. This is the speed in which the air needs to be moving across your stabilizing surfaces to get those to now start to react. Below that is our yoke neutral position, and this is the speed at which your yoke will now come to neutral center position. Again, this will vary with mostly every aircraft. At the very bottom, we also have a checkbox to allow the prop wash to affect our yoke. We can set the engine idle, and then we can set the maximum engine RPM. To the right, we have turbulence. Turbulence is one of those really cool features that I find I really enjoy in the sim. Under turbulence, we can either turn it on or off. We also have the minimum force that will be applied to the yoke and the maximum force that will be applied to the yoke. Now these forces, I can only assume that they are going to be a percentage of the minimum and max force that we have set for the yoke, not what the yoke is capable of. Below that, we have impact percentage. This is going to be how much the turbulence will impact the aircraft using the forces that we had set above. At the very bottom under velocity, this is the reaction time to the turbulence on the yoke itself. So the higher the number, the quicker the response time. The lower the number, the lower the response time. To the right, we have engine vibration. We can enable or disable. Below that, we can either check whether you're in a jet or whether you're in a piston engine. At the very bottom, we can set the amount of force that's going to be applied to the yoke for our engine vibration. Now let's move over to the stall warning tab. In the stall warning tab, we can either turn it on or off. We have the amount of force that's used. And we also have some custom settings here below, which you can choose to turn on or off. We can set the onset of our stall speed warning. So this will be before you actually get into your stall. Then we have our max stall warning speed. And below that, we have the onset of stall warning angle of attack. I guess if you are at a 10 degree angle, this will start your stall once you get too low in your speed. Once you get to 20 degrees, which here is set to our max stall warning, and you get down to your speed, then your yoke should be shaking all over the place. At the very bottom, we have enable overspeed. To the right of stall warning, we have ground. Now this will give us some ground effects, ground vibration, as well as landing effects. Under the ground vibration, we can check it on or off. We can set our minimum and maximum force to be applied to the yoke, as well as our takeoff speed for the aircraft. Underneath of that, we have even and uneven, and quite honestly, I have no idea what this does. I've tried moving it left and right, and it really didn't seem to make any effect for me. Over on the right, under landing effect, we can either turn it on or off, and we have the force that can be applied to the yoke. The next and last tab that we have is the effect tab. We can now set a dynamic force for the aircraft. Now what dynamic force is going to do, it will increase the amount of force that's applied to the aircraft's stabilizing surfaces the faster that you go, just like you would in a normal aircraft. 
So you would need to set your minimum speed and the maximum speed for the aircraft. Now under maximum speed, they only allow up to 200. I don't know if that's knots or miles per hour, but 200 is what we're allowed to set as our max speed. What I usually do, instead of actually setting a max speed, I just set the cruise speed for the aircraft. And then this way, if I go over that, I'm gonna be at full force on the yoke anyway. Below max speed is our feedback ratio. Now, when we achieve our max speed, we should have the max force applied to the yoke. But what the feedback ratio is, is we can actually compound that force to the yoke. So the higher the ratio, the more force that's gonna be given to the yoke, the higher or faster that you go. The lower the feedback ratio will decrease the compounding force effect as you get higher in speed. Next over to the right, we have yoke synchronization. This is for those that may have more than one yoke in your cockpit. This will sync both of the yokes together. Below that, we have software trim. This will allow us to use an auxiliary trim hardware device to adjust our pitch trim. And then we won't have to use the trim switch on the yoke. When you enable the software trim, it disables the trim switch on the yoke for trim but you can still use that trim switch to set it up for anything else in the cockpit using SPAD, FSU IPC, or the like. Now the other thing that they allow us to do here is to adjust the trim speed. This will come in handy if you're using the default Microsoft Flight Sim key bindings, and you find that when you're adjusting your hardware trim, it's not fast enough, well then you can adjust this double the speed, triple the speed, on the other hand, if you're using an application like SPAD, FSU IPC, MobiFlight, anything like that to set up your hardware trim, then you're able to set the trim speed in that application. Meaning every time I turn that trim wheel, I can make it go faster because of the settings that I have available in SPAD. So I won't need to adjust this. We'll just leave this on one. To the right, we have Autopilot. When we tick this, this will allow the yoke to follow the autopilot. Now, if you do overpower the yoke while it's in autopilot state, it will cancel your autopilot just like it would in a normal aircraft. Once you have all of these set up in your effects, we need to enable that on the force feedback yoke itself. To do that, we need to hit the enable button at the very bottom. Once we do, it will now enable all of the effects that we had just programmed. Now you will need to do this every single time you fire up the force feedback software. So the next time I fire this up, again, it's gonna say enable at the very bottom and I'm gonna to have to come in and hit the enable button to enable all of the effects. All right, so now that we have gone over all the effects and the different pages in the force feedback tools, Let's go over a flowchart of what you need to do every time you start up the sim or the software. All right, so the first thing we want to do is to power up the yoke. Once that is powered up and gone through its self-check, we can then hit connect on the hardware device. At this point, we are now going to load in the configuration that we want to use here below depending on the aircraft. So we'll head over to configure, I'll load a profile, and let's just pick a kit fox and hit OK. Now that will load all of those parameters for that aircraft in the pitch and roll for us. All right, so now that's done, we need to head over to the effects tab. In the effects, we need to make sure that we load the proper effect profile. So we're gonna choose the profile that you have, hit apply, and it will change all the settings in our effects for that profile. Now we need to go down and hit enable, and that will enable all the effects instantly on the yoke. You do not need to hit apply at this point. You only need to hit apply if you decide to change any of these settings. The apply button will be necessary to push those settings to the yoke. Now that we have all that set up, we're going to spawn into the simulator. And once we are on the tarmac ready to go, we'll then hit connect to connect to Microsoft Flight Simulator. But just remember, you need to select Microsoft Flight Simulator in the software list every time you load up the software.
Alright folks, that's going to finish us up for today's episode. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content and found it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, click on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button to all of my Flight Simmer friends around the world. Keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.